This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn to awaken your divine intuition and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. everybody and welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. We are uh, streaming live on Facebook for those of you guys who are listening that way and for everybody else will be uh, the usual ways where we are on, um, I can't even remember all the places, but like iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, etc. We got all those going on for you guys who like to listen to the audio. Um, Been away for a little while, but now back. Um, and those of you guys who are familiar to the, with the show, um, we have something called Free Readings Tuesday. So you can call in for your free reading, 844-390-8255, 844-390-8255. And I heard uh, last week, People were like, I tried and tried. Yeah, lines fill up really quickly. So call in. If you don't get through, try again. Sometimes as an mark, but it's just um, just kind of what happens. So just do what you can. Um, I wanted to, before we get going, I wanted to read a little bit about what's going on right now. And I may return to this during the show from time to time as we hit these new and full moon markers. So I'm reading from the book, Moon Astrology, my book. And so now we just passed through full moon in Pisces and a lot of you guys are still seeing that Pisces full moon streaming in through your window. So full moons are about completion and Pisces is about, one way of looking at Pisces is about empathic flow. So the guiding vision for this full moon, uh, a woman is whitewater rafting. She's wearing a helmet and life jacket. She's taken training. She knows how to right her boat if it flips over and she's well-versed on how to use her paddle to navigate. The particular river she's navigating right now (laughs) is very rough. There are boulders and whirlpools, but she is not afraid. She knows that when she allows the water to carry her without fighting it and without battling the power of waves and currents, without battling, she will be carried safely through all challenges. Her only job is to stay present, to not allow the current to hypnotize her and to use her paddle as she senses she needs it. Flow plus awareness is her mantra. She can navigate the roughest waters with this. So in this case, this time that we're in now, this guiding vision speaks to the idea of whenever we're resisting the energy of any situation, we are resisting the support of flow, which is the stream of energy the universe uses to take us to our highest possibility. So you know, the energy demands to move and continue moving in its chosen direction. And so resistance is futile. So whatever situation you're in right now, the best choice is to flow with the energy and let it carry you or us or all of us to a new unexpected destination. Um, I like this idea of knowing that things are really wild right now. For a lot of us, there's fits and starts and this doesn't work and that doesn't work and yet 
um, just relaxing into these currents and waves, and we will be taken into the next step or the next stage. So today our topic is, does gratitude work? Learn why recalling what we are grateful for immediately shifts our perspective and takes us into a higher dimensionality. And I want to also read from this book, The Aquarian Messages, which is just directly about this. Number 47, follow the energy. If you're stuck, just like this Pisces full moon, pay attention to what's working. If something feels stuck or doesn't seem to be happening, look around for where the energy is happening. This is where flow is. Always move toward what feels lively, easy, effortless, activated, even if it's not where you thought you were heading, let the energy lead you. So I'd love for us, I'm gonna to go to the callers in just a moment and we've got free readings Tuesday, call in 844-390-8255, 844 but just for a moment, I'd like you to just close your eyes and just kind of let the waves and boulders and all that stuff, just let it relax for a minute, all your concerns and worries. And believe me, there are a lot of those right now. And just think of one thing, one thing that you're grateful for. Just kind of feel that. And then think of one more thing that you're grateful for. Think about that. And even if your gratitude is little as my oatmeal was good this morning, just, you know, let that be it. Think of one more thing you're grateful for. And then maybe another thing. And one last thing just to make this little collection of what you're grateful for. And open your eyes. And what you've noticed is that your vibration has lifted. Just in this simple, simple, simple practice of what am I grateful for? Uh, we lift our vibration. And then this magical thing happens where like attracts like, when you shift your vibration up, you're, you go from this dimension of lower vibration to this dimension of higher vibration. This is where your reality is suddenly. Like attracts like, the more you're grateful for, the more you can shift to that higher vibration, uh, feeling that, knowing it, the more that's where you live every day. Okay, let's go to the calls. We have, first up, we have Karen. Um, Karen, Karen, what can I help you with today? Oh, well, um, I was interested in getting maybe a vibrational free reading and have been following you for years. So I'm excited I got through. Yes, absolutely. Well, give me, um, I don't like to be too general because I want you to sort of participate in what's going on. Okay. Tell me what's one situation you're curious about or one question that you've got that's more specific. What do you, what, what's going on in your life that you'd like to look into? Well, I am currently in a position where I have pretty much complete freedom which is amazing, did not happen easily or overnight. But I have recently found that um, my true joy is helping other people find their truth, their happiness, by getting to the root of their issue and then helping them work it out themselves. So basically, I'm just kind of a guide. And I found that that brings me great joy. So I'd like to know how I can do that more um, and maybe throw some monetization in there. 
<laughs> just to keep the freedom. <laughs> You know. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, so you want to you want to do um, you want to be in your joy, but you'd also like to um, have some abundance from that or have some sustenance. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of I'm getting this image. You know, when you said you you're a guide, and I got this image of you as like a a Sherpa. You're like a spiritual Sherpa. You know, helping everybody get to the top. But the image I got was um the sherpas get paid for helping um and yet they also get the experience like up on the mountain they also get to look around and see the amazing view that they're helping other yeah. people and i think it's something about making sure that it's not just about helping others which is great but that's like yeah 50 or 60% of what you do. The rest right. right now with this complete freedom is that you have experiences that bring you joy without worrying about helping others. What are some examples of things that make that happen for you? Um, in, in regard to helping others, you mean? No, for you, outside of helping others, oh. what, what brings you happiness? Oh, well, um, besides freedom and helping others, <laughs> my animals, um, um, being free of societal uh, pressures, um, and just being free to literally co-create as I move forward. Mm -hmm. That really brings me joy. And I've also found that maybe oddly for some, but through helping others, it's I've had some personal health issues that have literally almost just vanished. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. just gone. And they've been with me for decades. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's related. Yeah. Well, I think there's yeah. another piece about, um, you know, you mentioned freedom, like we aren't ever free from each other, right? Cause we're all one. Right. And so even if we're in the mm -hmm. most remote, remote, cave of hermitage we're still with everybody it's we can't we can't escape oneness so i wonder if also maybe that idea of freedom you look at that um differently you're not escaping from or separate from, i mean i know you don't think you're separate from but um freedom or being like Freedom is not maybe what you're looking for as your word, because this this contributing part is so big for you. And if you're contributing, freedom isn't quite yeah. where you're at. Um, well, I so guess, yeah, I, I guess it might be a little too general. Um, I used to really live within the confines of the social structure that I was born and raised in and right. the expectations of that. Yeah. And when I learned that those don't have to apply to my life or control my life, I can, you know, do my own thing and, and go out and find what makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's what yeah. That makes sense. It's just that we're still, uh, we're still um, in lockstep with each other, whether we want to be yeah. or not, you know, and yeah, no, yes, we, and can, I, we can, I love that. yeah, we can reject all the misbeliefs of our youth or our past or our culture um, but we're still with those other souls who are still in those programs or in those tapes or records or <laughs> CDs or yeah. uh, we can, you know, there's everybody's still with us. So um, I, th I think what well, I'm guess, receiving for yeah. you, Karen, I just want to give you this is um, try and get a 60% for helping others. That's great. And then take that 40% and make sure that's for you. Don't, don't worry about others. Make sure whatever it is, your animals, nature, sleeping, uh, take that for you. And that is the place where I feel like it's um, kind of missing for you. Like, like make sure you get what your soul yeah. is requiring. And that's, that's, that's the piece of the reading to give to you is make sure you're getting the piece that's you enjoying. 
outside of helping. So I'll just give you that. Thanks so much for calling in. I appreciate your time. Yeah, Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. I think Karen's on the right track. And sometimes we go from struggling to helping other, you know, we figure out how to get through the struggle as she did, and then we go to help others, but we still require our own enjoyment in this life. We still require our own enjoyment. Um, let's see, we've got next uh, ready to uh, call in is, uh, I think it's Domino. Domino, welcome to the program. I can't hear you yet. Are you there? I still can you hear am. me? Yes. Hi. Welcome. What can I help you out with today? Okay. I'd like to know what's up with my son. Uh huh. How How old is your son? Uh, fifty three. Fifty three. Yes. So that um, it's really interesting because when I looked at him initially, I got that he <laughs> he was like twenty five or twenty six. Is he not doing the steps of adulthood quite like you thought he would, or where's he at? Well, he's separated like for three years now, and he's not really doing pretty good. He's in denial about a lot of things. Yeah. What do you think that your role is to help him? What do you think your responsibility is right now? I'm trying to talk to him, but he won't talk. Yeah. When you look at it, what do you see as what his outcome's going to be or how he's going to move through this? What do you think? I don't know. So what I would say is happening for him is that he's re he somehow didn't do um, a full growth growth step in his late or mid to late twenties. Somehow he stayed immature in some areas, which is fine. It's lots of people, lots of us. You know, we don't grow perfectly in, a, in line. We skip steps and we got to go back and fix them. And so it feels like he's um, working on some issues from that age. And there's really, even though you love him and have concern, there is absolutely nothing that your influence um, is going to help him with. So you can kind of take a step back and know that he's in process with his maturing and understanding, but that all you can do is love him, talking to him, worrying about him, trying to figure it out. Just let that go um, and put your thoughts to other things. And in a couple of years, he will be coming around in a better way. But right now he's just working through it. Do you think that's something you can do? Just kind of let it go for a while? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, he's 53, right? Do you think that's an, a, that's an adult, right? Yes, that is. <laughs> yeah, just let it go. He'll, he's working on it. Um, but again, maybe for you, kind of, you could backtrack to that age of 25, 26, what he was doing then. It's a parallel to what he's going through now for him. So thank uh, you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling. We, we appreciate you calling into the show. Good luck. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We love our kids, don't we? Right. And we love them when we're, they're little. We love them when they're teenagers and we love them when they're young adults yeah. and then we love them when they're older yeah. adults. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for calling in. I think we've got some other callers on hold, so we're going to see who's there. Okay, looks like we've got Pam. Pam, welcome to the program. 
Hi, Sarah. How are you today? Very good. Thank you. What's up for you? What's what can I help you out with? Um, my life is in flux. I retired about a year ago. I'm pretty bored with being home. I'm thinking my old position offered me a job yesterday. And I'm kind of undecided about staying retired, going back to work, whether I want to continue living in Maryland or whether I want to relocate, whether I want to stay in the relationship I'm in or move on. I'm just in a state wow. of flux on everything. Yeah, a lot of, um, you're kind of reassessing everything. Um, Yes, a whole lot of uncertainty going on. Well, not really uncertainty. Um, really, you're facing decisions that you're getting ready to make. So it's not really uncertainty. It's just more like um, getting the courage up to make some choices is where I see you at. Um, so I write everything in these little notebooks while we're... Um, while we're working, and for you, when you mentioned the 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 <laughs> returning to your job, I get this kind of I yeah. don't know if you can see it. I get maybe I don't know if you're on Facebook Live or if you're, but I I got the universal no sign on that. Like nope, nope. Yes, it's fine to be bored. Yes, it's fine to want to not retire or come out of retirement, but going back to where you were is. <laughs> just like such a dead end. Don't do that. I mean, you can do what you want, but it's it's a dead end and a waste of time. And it's not going to give you what you're hoping for, which is new experiences, new people, um, different I'm parts of yourself. I'm looking at it just like, like some fast cash. Is yeah, kind of it would... what I'm looking at. If I'm going to stay here where I am, that working would allow me some fast money for finishing my basement into an apartment and being able to continue to live here comfortably. Or, you know, otherwise, I'm looking at whether I want to sell my house, downsize, and that's where the whole relationship issue comes into play, too. Yeah. Do I do um, it with the person I'm with or don't I? Yeah. So I'm seeing pretty much a complete change and not returning even for the fast cash, putting your energy towards finding something different that brings money. Um, I don't see you staying where you are. And the relationship is all about negotiating with this partner if they want to come with you where you're going or not. So that's kind of where that's at. Um, I don't see any kind of, let's see. What I see is I see movies or pictures of what's happening in highest possibility. I don't see returning to the job, old job. I don't see spending any time creating some kind of apartment where you can stay. I see some kind of move or transition. And the piece that is that is still to be determined is you talking very openly with your partner and saying, I need to have change. I need to do something different. Are we going to do this together or are we going to separate? And, and that is still being decided as to uh, what that person decides. Right. We've had that discussion over and over and over again, because mm -hmm. I'm the one who's like, we need a change. We don't need yeah. to to continue with this, but he wants to stay close to his children. Mm -hmm. And I say Maryland is not a good state to be retired in. So we need to be looking at somewhere that's more financially doable and maybe still close enough to be able to visit because we can afford it so much better. Yeah. I think um, the way to look at it is you've, you're, you're blocking each other and 
beginning to look at what what you want outside of what he wants and beginning to work toward what you would like and seeing if he can go along with it or not. Um, this this blockingness that is happening between you doesn't, it's like, it, it doesn't move. It doesn't move now, it right. doesn't move in 10 years, it doesn't move in 20 years. So you have to decide, is that gonna be, is, is staying in the status quo gonna be enough for you? And with the state of you're wanting to experience new things, um, that's not feeling like that's going to work for you. Don't be afraid of making these hard decisions. I mean, you know, when you were in, well, I remember when I was in kindergarten, we had cubbies. And when we went to first grade, we had lockers. And I was terrified all kindergarten that I was going to have to get a locker and I wasn't going to know how to use it. Like the whole year, <laughs> I had anxiety about this. And then of course you get to first grade and you're fine. You know how to use the locker. You can trust that if you're being called to change and if you're being called to have new experiences that the universe is gonna meet you with what you need. You don't have to be afraid to let go of things that you've been holding on to for a long time. So um, Pam, I'm gonna let thank you go. You I've, got some, I've got some other folks on hold, but thank you for calling in. I know it's a rough time or confusing time, but just um, just look at what you want and see where that takes you. Thanks for calling in. Thank okay. you. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when we look at oh, one person wants one thing, one person wants another, and what do we do if we can't negotiate and it's we're just blocking each other? Um, is it really our right to hold another person back from what they desire. Um, we got to work that through. It's a big choice. I think we have a Pamela now. Pamela, is yeah. that you? Hi, welcome. It is. I, I cannot believe I actually got through. Well, good. Congratulations. <laughs> so, I know. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What can I help you out with? Um, well, you know, um, I get your emails and um, happened to see the free reading for today. And I thought, you know, what better day than any day? Today is my now deceased husband's birthday. So uh -huh. I just thought, oh, why not? Let me let me just phone it. So, um you are a person uh, who has come through a lot and you have learned the art or the practice of keeping your vibration really high, even in the midst of a lot of suffering. Um, what do you want to create now? Like, what is your dream that you think you can have? And then what is what you're really wishing you could do? What what are those two places? Um, oh, great question. You know, I think you're right. I, I work really hard for peace. Um, I I daily practice gratitude um, to remind myself that I've had so much to be grateful for, despite um, despite loss. Um, and and so I think I want to just continue to call in as much peace and and happiness into my world as possible. Two weeks after my husband unexpectedly passed away, our daughter committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So um, all of this happened in 2015. So the past several years have been challenging to say the least. Um, and I think I just, as I move forward in, in, on my journey, I just I just want to invite in more love and more, um, more happiness. How did you, how would you advise other people? How did you, what saved you in this immense grief that you were in? What, what, how did you get through each day? Um, being grateful, um, instead of being mad at God or the universe, um, for taking my amazing life away from me. 
I said, you know, I'm lucky. I had so many amazing years. I had so many amazing memories. And so instead of being um, ungrateful or instead of being angry, I just turned that loss into, damn, I'm pretty lucky that I had so much happiness and that I had so many memories and that I was loved the way I was loved. Um, And so that's what, I think that's what literally saved my soul. What did you think that you, and you might not know it yet, or maybe you do, when you look at why those things happen to you, which are super traumatic, what do you think the soul lesson for you was, or do you know? Um, great question. I think um, the lesson continues to be taught. So the lesson is not one lesson. Um, I think initially the, the lesson was to teach me to be grateful. Um, and then it was to teach me that um, tomorrow isn't promised. So to make, to make sure I live in moments more and not take them for granted. Um, And I think the lesson that comes up for me most recently is to be very mindful how I spend my time, who I spend my time with, and to make sure I tell people that I love that I love them. Yeah. It took you completely out of your head. You had a lot Mm -hmm. of, and and it took you right into your heart and you Mm -hmm. opened up into compassion for the entire human experience this great these two great tragedies that you suffered um yeah when you think of your calling now with this understanding um aside from this beautiful complete answer of being grateful and and living in each moment um in terms of your offering to the world at the highest potentiality of like what you can do, what do you think that is? Love better. Okay, and then that's the A plus answer for sure. But what's the specific, like how are you meant to work with others or teach others or share your understanding? What's your mission? Um, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm still trying to figure that out. What do you yeah. what do you do for your work now? Do you work? I used to work. I used to um, be um, a lobbyist. I was uh, executive. I owned a couple of businesses, very successful. And um, when I lost literally fifty percent of my family, um, it took such a toll. It took such a toll on me physically. I got physically ill, um, mm-hmm. and so I literally. Um, you know, the body keeps score as the book reminds us. And oh, yeah. so I literally took time out to just heal my body. And in doing that, all the things that used to make sense to me that I got value in, I no longer was enjoying. So I just stopped doing it. So I think that you're, uh, you've approached or you've mastered or you've come to this place where um, your understanding brings you to um, your mission or your next step, which is this idea of seva or service. And Mm -hmm. I think this, the the service doesn't have to be charity. That's not what it's, it's not about like being on a foundation or any of those things. Um, It's about you showing up in the world and offering your understanding either in a formalized way or just in a day-to-day way. But with your particular gifts, it feels like your next step is to teach or way show or, or preach or offer this astounding understanding that you've come to that so many people now are, especially now are, you know, struggling, struggling with loss and how to get through it and grief and how to get through it. And Also just um, even for people that haven't had these amazing tragedies, there's still people don't know how to get to this place that you know how to get to. 
It's almost like mm -hmm. lending the hand to them. You know, we lend the hand down to those coming up the path, and then we're assisted by those who've walked the path before. And it feels like right. you're meant to be, the next step is some kind of way show or teacher for you. And goodness okay. knows the, the planet needs you, right? <laughs> <laughs> the other <laughs> souls need you <laughs> like where uh we all need uh the help that that you with your understanding could offer so just consider that as that might be where you're okay. heading real soon okay. yeah okay. hey pamela thank you um i'm sorry i didn't uh your husband and your daughter did not come through mediumship wise that's not quite what i usually do where sometimes it happens but I more no, see the full lesson, but thank you so much for calling in and sharing your story. We appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, people that go through, um, you know, I know a lot of you guys listening have suffered abuse and loss and change at really profound levels. And if we can get through those life challenges or those soul lessons or whatever we might want to call them tragedies traumas and if we can get through them into a place where pamela is and i'm sure pamela isn't in this gratitude place every single moment of every day but she's continually reminding herself um and so if you've gone through the muck and the mire you often have a lot to answer or a lot to offer to those who are in the midst of the muck and mire we are continuing with free readings tuesday uh, lines are open now uh, so you could call in to 844 844-390-8255 844-390-8255 and we're working on the ideas of gratitude and Pisces full moon right now, and this idea of flow. Um, and we're just sort of working on all of these ideas. A lot of you guys know we're about to enter a pretty big retrograde time. You know, yeah, but don't worry about it too much. You don't need to say, oh, it's the retrograde. Just live. Flow is always happening somewhere at some part of your life. So just seek. Again, it's like this idea of what's easy, what's effortless, what's working and going there. Looks like we have Carol. Uh, Carol, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hi, what can I help you out with today? Well, I was kind of listening to a couple of callers prior to me and just resonated um, with me a bit. Um, like the last caller just going through some life challenges and maybe not her same life challenges for me, but, um, and just, you know, coming kind of through that right now and thinking, oh, well, I need to serve others. Um, but I'm kind of getting to the point where maybe that's not for me in a way that I was thinking. And just wondering if you have any insight on that. Yeah, I agree. How old are you? I'm 53. Okay, and what were you thinking of doing? Well, I thought I might want, well, I really delved into um, like energy healing. Uh, I'm just kind of all the things, you know, is this right? Uh, I took some Reiki classes, is this right? Um, you know, just different things in kind of those lines. But every time I kind of got further into it, I'm just like, well, you know, I, I like to know about it. And it's great and it's helped me, but what do I do with it? What's your um, sun sign? I'm a Capricorn. Capricorn, okay. Um, it's interesting because I see you working. Um, I do see you working one-on-one -on -one with people for some of your work, but I don't see it being of the body, I see it actually being more clairvoyance or third eye work. I think that you would be very, very good at um, 
intuition, clairvoyance, maybe mediumship. It, it's like energy healing uh, is for a certain type of person that has their energy running a certain way, whereas other people um, do better with third, third eye work. And I'm wondering what you've explored in that or um, like in terms of clairvoyance or that type of work, what experience you have there? I really don't have any experience, but I am, you know, I have thought about that as well. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure how much. Yeah. How and, and how comfortable, I, I, yeah, I feel like um, some people are by nature hands healers or body healers. Some people are more in this etheric realm. Some people are really great mediums. Some people excel at like past life regressions. And it feels like for you, um, it's more the clairvoyance that's gonna be the thing that is so simple for you. So you might just want to explore that. What do you feel about the idea of um, working one-on-one -on -one versus like leading a group or running an organization? I definitely prefer one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, I think it's almost like the Reiki and so forth kind of got you on the street next to the street you're supposed to go to. So it feels yeah. like just trying that out might be super interesting for you. And you trying know, that out in classes yeah. or something like that. Oh yeah, like on my website, I have tons of classes in that. Um, there's other people that offer it too, but you could just start there. Just go to the courses pages. And I think, I think there is a course called, it's something like the Psychic Claire's uh, project or the Psychic Rose project. And either of those would be great starting points to see like, oh yeah, this is easy for me. And just see how that goes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think you're that really close. Me. Yeah. You're really close. You're just like in slightly the wrong you know, you're like uh, doing chemistry, but you're supposed to be doing botany. It's, it's just like you're very close to it, but you're just like one little tweak and you'll find your your spot. And I think that'll be very successful for you. So yeah, interesting. Thank you so yeah. much. That really hey. excites me. Yeah, thanks for calling, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have, you know, we think uh, psychic, like everyone, you know, you might think psychic is a medium the departed, but that's, that's really a very specific style gift that some people really excel at. Some people excel at hands healing. Some people, all they see is past lives. And so knowing um, kind of like where your sweet spot is within the psychic gift realm can be super helpful. Um, for those of you who haven't gotten this yet, if you go to my website, sarahwiseman.com, there's it's a free ebook, um, something like what are your unique psychic gifts? And it'll give you a list. You can just download it. It'll, it'll give you a list of all the psychic gifts. And then you can kind of see like, yeah, that really fits me or that doesn't really resonate or, um, you know, just kind of whatever you like. I know for me, I see everything in third eye. Um, I find channeling, which is working with language to be extremely simple. Those are my best gifts. Mediumship, I find a little draining. Um, energy healing, I find a little intense. And so for me, I have most of my signs or most of my planets are in Aquarius. I'm super air sign. So that makes sense that I'm going to be more up in these realms where other people um, have different astrological blueprints, they're gonna have different gifts. So just figure out what yours are. And chances are good, most of us don't have, we can do all the gifts. Once you're awake, you can do all the gifts, but some are gonna be easier than others. And always like this whole idea of what we read at the beginning of like, you know, finding, <laughs> going with what's easy, going with what's effortless, um, you don't have to slog through whatever uh, you're working on. You just want to um, go with what your strengths are. 
as with anything you're doing, just go with those strengths. Those are your gifts and talents that you're here to work with and contribute with. Let's see, we've got Linda on hold. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, where are you calling from? Texas. Yes, that's okay. What can I help you out with? Um, I just am in a state in my life. I'm 72, um, and I'm really dis disturbed by what's happening um, in Texas, but basically the U.S. Um, and I feel like um, I'd like to consider um, like moving. Uh-huh. And just, you know, wanted to know um, if there was anything around that. Yes. Um, and um where you can, where do you have some places chosen that you're thinking about? Um, not specifically, no. Yeah, and what what do you hope? Like by moving, do you hope that um, it'll be less? I don't know, politically difficult, or what are you thinking? Um, <laughs> I mean, that's all in flux, right? Um, it basically just kind of this emotional thought process, um, you know, and I really am out of the country is really what um, yeah. I've considered. Um, um, and I'm very um, drawn to Latin countries. Um, so somewhere in that realm, but I'm also very close to my grandchildren who are no longer little bitty either. So, um, you know, they're on their way um, to successful lives. So I've just kind of got this whole question mark in front of me that I just, I don't know if that's really where I would want to, to go. But when I really think of it deep down, it, it sounds like something that I would really desire. It's really interesting because when you first mentioned moving, I, I did see out of the US, but I didn't really see Latin America. I saw more, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure, but it felt more like um, Europe or mm -hmm. something more like that. Um, okay. So it could be like if you put this more the it could be more like Spain or Portugal possibly versus say somewhere in South America just just but um but the other thing I get is that whatever you're going to do and I do think you're going to do something but I would treat it like you know um you know like if you're a professor you take a sabbatical uh every whatever, seven years, it's almost like you're, right, taking, right. you're taking a sabbatical from your current life and, or you're taking a gap year for yourself um, <laughs> or even a, yeah, even a gap, it's a gap years, but it's not like you're going permanently. You're going for okay. the experience of this other culture and to, it, it's not about escaping Texas as much as it is about you desiring to have this other experience. So okay. looking at it that way and looking at it as a one or two year temporary adventure, that will help yeah. you make choices differently in terms of, you know, okay. what do you do? Do you, you know, pack up all your stuff or do you rent it or you know, all, all the decisions, but right. It feels like you go elsewhere for a while and then you maybe return to where you are and then you do another move soon after that. Okay. So um, that makes perfect sense. I don't see Latin America. I, I don't, I, I know that might have, I, I just don't see that. I, th I see something different. So maybe just be kind of open to where you might be heading. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely will. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yes. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. You know, a lot of, yeah, thank you. A lot of people are on the move or wanting to be on the move 
during this time frame, this pandemic, and um, we have been so hemmed in and we are so uncomfortable with all the chaos and the conflict that is happening. Um, but what we're really doing internally, we're working through, as lots of you noticed uh, in your own lives, we're working through all this stuff that hasn't been worked through yet. That's one thing we're doing personally. And we are also collectively working through all the stuff that we have not as a, as a larger society worked through. Um, we've got Susan as our last caller today. Susan, welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. So you got in, you got into something with somebody earlier that was <clears throat> interesting to me, talking to them about their psychic gifts. And I would love to know what you see from me in that area, where if I were going to develop one or two areas, where do you see it being p potentially easiest for me to develop that? When you're talking, what comes to me is that you might have some pretty interesting gifts in mediumship, which I don't know if you've explored that or not, but um, is, is that something you do? I've had or? people show up. <laughs> no, yeah. It's not something I do. I'm, I'm actually a psychologist, but I had somebody show up in a session one time. So um, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I think um, like that might be a possibility. I think mediumship. Um, ancestry work you know with the departed for healing um possibly past life but it feels more like it's like karmic ancestry so that could be really fascinating and adding that into like what you're doing now a different perspective i have a lot of courses on that on the website like right now a lot of people are doing it's called the mediumship project and that might be a pretty interesting entry point for you. It's just on the courses page. Um, okay. And that'll teach you mediumship and that'll be, you'll know right away. I think it'll be super simple for you. So uh, that sounds like a great idea to explore that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah Thanks for calling. It. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Well, folks, we are going to be wrapping up the show. So you've been listening to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman. You can find me at sarahwiseman.com. We have tons. Well, we have 33 self-study courses of all aspects of psychic development. Uh, and then we also have Intuition University, which is our private um, group training where I work with you guys directly. So those are both on the website and I invite you to take a look and also to sign up for free Divine Astrology, which is my free monthly channel forecast, which teaches you about the month ahead. Everyone uh, wishing you the best during this Pisces full moon, and we will be back next week, same place, same time with more Ask Sarah. And again, find me at sarahwiseman.com. Thanks for listening. Want more of Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman? Tune in weekly for more divine teachings on living a soul-led life. Want Sarah's books, courses, and free gifts? Visit sarahwiseman.com. Shanti.